welcome back again to another UML tutorial. And in this tutorial I'm going to continue building on the class diagram example and show you some of the relationships that can exist between classes. Towards that end I'm going to create a new class diagram and I'm going to draw uh, different types of relationships in there between classes, explain what those relationships mean and after that I will show you how it affects the code that you're writing. Okay, so let's first create a new class diagram. So I'm going to call it uh, Relations Example, which is done in UML. The diagram name is Relations Example, and it is a class diagram. So I'm going to press finish. Okay, then as always, I will first import all the necessary Java components. Okay, let's just get this out of the way for a moment. Actually, I can close it all together, so I have a bit more space. So, for the model selected, I want to add in the Java profile. Okay, so that's our project. So, okay, let's draw two classes. So, in this case, the first class is called Customer. And the second class is called, not zoo, that will be the next example, product. So a customer can buy one or more products. So, But a product can exist independently from a customer. And a product is also not necessarily a part of a customer. So I would prefer to model both, both concepts separately. But since they do have a relationship, I will create an association relationship between them. So click on customer, click on product. Okay. So I would like to set the owner to associations to, to emphasize that it's just a very loose relationship. Next to that, uh, we have the multiplicity here. So in this case, we have one customer buys one product. Uh, I would like to change that too, because one customer can buy many products, but doesn't necessarily have to buy a product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to member end and click on 0 dot dot star, which means uh, can have uh, none or more of a certain concept. So in this case, one customer can have many products, but not necessarily needs to have a product. Just to show you the difference, if I choose one dot dot star, it becomes like this. So one customer will have many, one or more products. So there we go. Okay, so that's our first association example. So let's generate some Java code. There we go. So as you can see, two classes are now created, customer and product, but other than empty skeletons, there's nothing to see there. Okay, let's delete this for the next example. And delete the diagram. So now I'm going to show the so-called aggregation relationship. Uh, the aggregation relationship is if one class is a part of a other class, but the two classes can also exist independently of each other. So the example I'm going to have now is a. There we go. Let's scroll up. Is I'm going to name this class Zoo. And a zoo exists as a concept, but a zoo generally needs animals. So there you go. An animal can also exist independently of a zoo, but generally the animals are in the zoo. Or at least in well-developed countries. Uh, unless it's a really big country in the, with a jungle that has animals in it. Anyway, in this example, animals are in the zoo and not in the jungle. So again, these two have a association relationship but I need to configure it as an aggregation relationship. So how do I do that? 
Well, first of all, I would like to indicate that um, that this is a shared aggregation. Sorry, the wrong sign. That this is a shared aggregation relationship, which means that zoo has uh, multiple animals inside itself. So that's indicated by the white diamond. The white diamond is always on the side of the object that contains the other object. Okay. Next to that, I would like to set the owner to classifier so that a attribute of the type animal will be created inside the zoo class. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much that. Oh, last thing, multiplicity. One zoo has multiple animals. So in this case, I'm also going to set the zero to many. It's possible to have an empty zoo. But generally, there should be animals. So one, one zoo has many animals. So there we go. Let's uh, generate some Java code again. Oh, one more thing I forgot. Let's just delete this. Um, like I said, if we generate code of this, the zoo class will contain an attribute of the type animal. This attribute is actually already in the class diagram, but not visible. So let's right click to make it visible. You can right click on, go to filters, show and hide contents, then click the animal property. So there it is. So as always, when we create properties inside a class diagram, uh, getters and setters will be generated. Uh, in this, so in this case, I want my attribute to be private, and naturally, I want to have the appropriate stereotypes attached, which I didn't do in the previous example. It's quite possible to uh, not attach stereotypes to a class and still generate Java codes. However, you are limited. Uh, to the things that UML has, so some of the specific Java things like constructors will not be available. And therefore, it's always a good habit to attach the appropriate stereotypes. So there we go. Okay, let's generate the, really generate the Java code now. Okay, so we have the animal class and the zoo class. The animal class is pretty much empty because I didn't define any attributes. But if I look at the zoo class, we have a private list animal. Why? Because a list can contain multiple objects and the appropriate getters and setters. So, in so literally inside the zoo class, there is uh, one or more animal classes or objects. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so last example. I am going to show the composite relationship. The composite relationship is very similar to the aggregate relationship. The only difference is that two things are very, very fixed. One is literally a part of another. So, typical example, we have a house. And we have a brick. A house even though possibly to exist without bricks, you will, you'll end up with a lot of other materials, such as a steel frame or, or uh, roof tiles. But yeah, generally you need bricks to build a house. A uh, brick can exist independently, but it's generally part of a house. Uh, so in that sense, a house has a composite relationship of bricks, because a house is made of bricks. So again, let's draw a association and go to the properties of that. So in this particular case, I would like again the owner to be the classifier. I'm only going to say that the aggregation is a composite in this case, which is symbolized by a black diamond. Other than that, uh, I again would like that to be an attribute, which should already be there. So let's make it visible. There we go. So there's a brick attribute in the house. So I would like to make it private. And lastly, I need to change the multiplicity because one house definitely consists of multiple bricks. And we need one or more bricks this time. So there we go. You cannot have a house of zero bricks. Bricks are not optional. So there we go. There is our uh, composite relationship. So let's attach the stereotypes before we generate the Java code.
And lastly, the attribute stereotype. And there we go. Okay, then generate the Java code. And let's take a look. So we have the house class, which again has a private list brick and a getter and setter, and the brick class contains nothing. So in terms of code, it's the same as the aggregation relationship. The difference in meaning is, however, purely contextual. Um, in a class diagram, we want to communicate uh, certain conceptual things. So in this case, by making the difference between aggregation and composition, we make clear how conceptually tightly linked two classes are. Okay, so that's in a nutshell drawing relationships between classes in a class diagram. See you next time. Mm -hmm.